The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to discuss the do's and don'ts of landscaping, as well as second summer crops. Our guest is author Tamara Haspel will be with us and will answer your garden questions. The hour is full, so join us. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to another edition of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. So happy that you've chose us to be part of your day. Whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2024 through our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, underneath the Season 8 tab at the top of the page, in-studio video replay, podcast replay, however you're doing such, thank you very much. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Grow. Happy if you want to be part of the program, you can do that by two simple avenues. You can give us a call toll free, coast to coast at 1 800 927 show. That's 1 800 927 7469. Or you can send us an email to garden talk radio at gmail.com. That's garden talk radio at gmail.com. And a side note, we uh, made this mention a couple of weeks ago. We are wanting to put together a segment. Uh, illustrating or sharing your story about your first experience gardening, whether it was a parent or later on in life through a YouTube video, uh, whatever that story is, we would like to know about it and we will share it on, on the program, whether anonymously or your first name or uh, your location, however you want to uh, inform us of that. Send it on over to Garden Talk Radio at gmail.com and uh, we may share it on the air. Before we get in the program, Holly, it's time for this week's Joke of the Week. All right, so the joke of the week is, why why did the gardener quit his job? Oh, I don't know. Why did the gardener quit? Gardener shouldn't quit. His salary wasn't high enough. Salary as in salary. Yeah. All right. When I was a kid yeah. and- Oh, is this story news, time? <laughs> story time. Okay. On the news when they said salary on the TV, like, you know, oh, the government's salary was cut or whatever uh-huh. they talk about or teachers or whoever's salary gets cut um, on the news, I thought they meant like- Celery. Did you have peanut butter or something in your ears? <laughs> I didn't know what celery meant when I was a small child, uh, and I thought they meant like celery, like the the vegetable. Yeah, the, the government was cutting the vegetable. To cutting the vegetables, uh, like oh, it's a shame they're getting paid in celery. I don't know what I thought past that. May, but. Maybe some people think they should get paid in <laughs> celery. Uh, so let's get into the Not program. The week, this week, oh yeah, this week joke. garden joke is sponsored by Rescue dot com. American made rescue products keep your family home and you are protected from pest insects like wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, flies, ants, and more. Learn more at rescue.com. That's R E S C U E dot com. Landscaping do's and don'ts. Now, many people may choose to landscape their own property, uh, front yard, pat- backyard, patio, deck. Uh, others may choose to try to do some of it, but also outsource it to a local landscape company. Now, if you were in the Milwaukee area, David J. Franks uh, would be the one to go with. Uh, uh, They have been around since 1968, and they have everything that you would need in order to get the job done. Correct. So, um, so the first... David J. Frank. David J. Frank. Dot com. Yep. All right, so the first tip is don't start without a plan. So you can go to the garden center. You're, I'm going to do some landscaping. I'm going to buy some perennials. Perennials are plants that come back year after year. I'm going to buy a tree. I'm going to buy a cherry bush. You don't want to Im- do... It, you, impulsive buying is not good in this situation. No, especially if you are adding like a major a major plant. like Renovation. Yeah, like a like I said, like a tree, maybe like a, a lot of perennials. Perennials, like when you go look at the prices they're not cheap they're not like annuals where it's like you get six flowers for three dollars you get one plant usually they're like 15 20 30 dollars and you're like this is cute i'm just gonna impulsively spend 30 dollars no that's a bad idea 
Uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, again, have a plan. Are you wanting to uh, revitalize the back landscape or the backyard? You want to, you know, pull the grass out and put a, a big bed in. You want to put some trees in. If you're in an urban setting, if you're in a sitting dw- city dwelling, what are the legalities of how close you can be planting items to the property line? That's another thing you got to be aware of. Um, and again, if you are going to go to the route of, hey, I'm going to hire a landscaper. Here's my vision, landscaper guy or girl. Make it happen. You want a licensed and insured landscaper. True, there are some very good independent landscapers, and I'm not knocking them. I'm knocking the people that have no clue what they're doing. They're they're just fly-by-night people. They're going to charge you the least amount and do a terrible job in order to get your X amount of dollar check, and they're out of there, and you'll never hear from them again. Right. You, right, so you another, get what you pay for. Right. So another one is do think long term. And in that case, also don't be afraid to get rid of things that might not that you might not like. So this, you know, maybe you bought a home and recently and you're like, this bush is the ugliest bush I've ever seen in my entire life. They're, they make a saw for that. <laughs> Don't be like, don't give yourself some weird guilt and be like, that bush might have been there for the last 30 years. I'm not saying you should rip all your plants out, but what I'm saying is you're like, and you even know that maybe you've dealt with this this type of plant in the past. You know that cutting it, trimming it, whatever is not fun. You think it's ugly. It doesn't, it doesn't incorporate your vision of what you want for your landscape. Yank that sucker out. Same thing with like anything that's overgrown. Maybe there's overgrown shrubs and you know that and you know that that's too much there's a better purpose for them don't don't or they belong in the trash i don't know but don't feel bad about that because overgrown plants plants that don't serve a good purpose can cause problems like home maintenance problems wood rot insects um and obviously just for you you're going to be annoyed if you keep that house looking at this terrible plant every time you drive in the driveway (laughs) pretty much and you're like oh but it was there or maybe it's hard to you find it's hard to mow around and you have to come up with some other sort of plan. Okay, how about a do? Do plan for low maintenance. Uh, the, uh, based on your time, time is precious to all of us. Father time is undefeated. So create a landscape that meets your time requirements. If you don't have time to water, have an irrigation system set up. If you are needing that mulch, uh, utilize plants that are not thirsty, water dependent. But you can vitalize you know make you, your time wa- choose wisely based on what time you have available and even there's billions of plants out there that can meet anybody's needs um, what you're looking for what you're requiring and what you don't want just don't buy something because well it's low maintenance and I, that's the kind of garden i want and that's the only plant that i can find there's one out there that will meet your needs Right. Um, And then another thing is like, don't think in ones. So you might see five different plants you want and you might have room for the five plants, but only the five plants. Maybe, you know, think about like, I want three. three What you're saying is do your research and and buy less than more because you can always fill in the gaps. Right. You can always fill in the gaps. And with that, also keep in mind that you might like five different plants, but you might not want to maintain three of those plants. So do some research. Do decide where to spend your money. Buying the smaller size of a faster growing plant lets you spend more uh, than larger plants or, or slower growing plants. So you can buy the small ones. It's going to take some time to grow. You don't need to buy, I don't know, fill in the blank, a $300 plant when you can buy four Seventy dollar plants, and, and there's it still fills all the spaces up you want to, as and then you know if you're going to do a water feature, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. If you're going to have a play area, landscaping is not necessarily plants, but if you're wanting to redesign the backyard to accommodate family time as well as aesthetically pleasing areas, you can do that as well. You got arborvitaes you can put in there. You can put lilac bushes in there. You can put a patio in there. You can put a little pond around the patio. Uh, one thing you need to be aware of if you're going to do this yourself, this is not a one weekend type of thing. 
this is typically going to take a tremendous amount of more time than you ever expected, not to be deterrent of you, but be aware that just because you saw it on this old house and it took 15 minutes to do a patio, that's, it's, it took, uh, we, we put a patio in one time and they did it 15 minutes on this old house. It took us seven days. Now we didn't do it seven days straight, but we worked, you know, half a day here, quarter day there to lay this patio. It's going to take time. About on the farm. On the farm, yeah. Oh. Uh, and and the the we're in a world of technology where hey, I don't quite know how to do this or cut this type of brick or do this type of landscaping. Type it in on YouTube and just don't go off the first video you see. Do three or four or five videos and then con, you know figure out what the con, what the overall common consensus is there and then try to tackle that task i mean doing it yourself is great it saves a lot of money but it does take a lot of time because you don't have the tools necessarily that a, a, in the milwaukee area, david j frank will have or your local independent landscaper has that's what they do every day that's what they do 60 hours a week you don't have those special shovels or spades or wood chippers or or uh or track hose. earth movers you know yeah. if you if you're like i want to put a, a wall here or something there's a lot of shoveling. There's a lot of shoveling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you, there, you know, and you realistically can hire somebody like David J. Frank if you're in the Milwaukee area to do a portion of the landscaping and the rest right. that you can do yourself. It's not necessarily an all or nothing. Nothing type wrong of with doing it all yourself if you want no. to do it, but it just takes time, patience, and a lot, a lot of sweat equity. And that might be what you're looking for. If that's not what you're looking for, how about Walton's Inc. Incorporated? Walton's Inc.com may have what you're looking for in spices and meat processing tools. Yeah, they have everything you can need for um, meat. And you can get all the equipment, seasoning, supplies to make sausage, jerky, any other meat product your, your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created meatjustics.com, an informational site to help you go from finished product to or make you help you get the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers. Walton's everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50, that's GROW50, to save 10% off your orders at $50 or more. And that's at Walton's Inc. Dot com. So we're going from landscaping to second summer crops. We'll go over what that means and what you could plant again to get more produce out of your garden. You're tuned in to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Take the guesswork out of composting with the AeroBin 400 or smaller 200 for easy composting. The AeroBin mimics how nature decomposes waste. The AeroBin is easy to use. You prepare your balanced organic waste. Just open it up, drop it in, and close. After a short time, fertile compost is produced, which is easily accessed via the lower side door. The thermal insulation in the AeroBin conserves heat, leading to rapid breakdown of the biomass and works efficiently year-round, even in cooler regions. There is no need to turn the biomass and it is pet and rodent resistant. It has little odor and can kill annoying weeds and seeds. It is BPA free. The AeroBin 400 or 200 comes with a reservoir at the bottom to collect the leachate when diluted makes for great compost tea liquid fertilizer. AeroBin composts kitchen and garden waste quickly. Easy to assemble with no special tools needed. The AeroBin makes composting rewarding and easy. Go to Costco.com to purchase. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit IVOrganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Blue Ribbon Organics providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardeners, farms, landscaping, and more. To find our products Products nearest you, visit blueribbonorganics.com. Happy 65th anniversary to David J. Frank, Southeastern Wisconsin's leading landscape company. Their award-winning services include everything from lawn care, landscape maintenance, design, construction, renovation, irrigation, sustainability, and more. Big or small, let the experts at David J. Frank handle the hard work for you. Find out more at davidjfrank.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural based animal repellent 
to keep deer and rabbits away from your valuable plants that is odorless after 30 minutes and dries clear. It creates a continuous invisible shield to protect your plants. Works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Will not clog your sprayer. Apply to your property without environmental damage. You can spray directly onto your plants up to flowering, then apply around your plants to continue protection. No need to reapply. Money back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use coupon code RADIO to save 10% off your order. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Goodbye biting bugs and plant invaders. No More Bugs by Naturally Green Products is your answer. No More Bugs is DEET free and not sticky on your skin. USDA certified No More Bugs has been a favorite by consumers across the country for over 14 years. More than a repellent, it is safe for you, your plants, pets, and home. Available online at nomorebugs.net, Amazon, Walmart.com, and the Home Shopping Network. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated seed company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use coupon code 10TG24 to save 10% off your order at jungseed.com. The coupon code is 10TG24 at jungseed.com for 10% off. Wind River Chimes will always be the inspiring harmony. With a large selection and customization options, you will find the sound that soothes you. Visit windriverchimes.com to shop and find out more. Welcome back to the Gardening with Join Holly Radio Show. Happy you are with us today. Moments away, we're going to discuss second crops in which you can plant in your garden. But first, a word from our good friends of at Honey Bee Healthy. Since 2000, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has helped beekeepers maintain healthy and thriving hives, attracting pollinators to your garden this year, as simple as hanging a hummingbird feeder with a mixture of sugar water and Honey Bee Healthy original. Don't be alarmed to see birds, bees, and butterflies dining together at the feeder. Pollinators coexist peacefully. Honey Bee Healthy Inc. is offering a 10% discount on an 8-ounce bottle of Honey Bee Healthy Original to this show's listeners. Enter discount code BEEGARDEN at checkout. For more information, mixing instructions, you can uh, purchase products at honeybeehealthy.com. That music was very punchy and fun. I always bring it. (laughs) Uh, if you missed or not able to capture the coupon codes available that we are that are comp- uh, that are sponsors that pay for the program to be heard on your radio station, uh, you can go to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page, and it'll take you right there. They're all listed for you, offering coupon codes to help you save some money, but also provide you with products that are trustworthy and will work for a very long time. All right, so let's talk about second summer crops. Um, I think is there another word for them? No, I mean there's it's a like, di- there, there, what there's they're not fall crops. They're not fall crops, and they're not secession planting yeah. crops. Secession crops are: I plant two rows of green beans now. I wait a week and a half. I plant two more rows. Then I wait another week and a half. I plant two more. The second crop is: I plant the whole four by eight bed of particular fill in the blank crop. Instead of just a little bit, I plant it as I normally would to get another full crop of said crop before the fall hits. So we've got a list of them. Now, this will your mileage will vary based on your particular growing zone. If you're in growing zone three, this might be a little more hard to accomplish than if you're in growing zone seven. So with that being said, we'll list off uh, several of the types of second crops in which one can grow. Cucumbers would be one of them. Now, cu- cucumbers want warm feet. They like warm roots, 65 degrees or above. So you can plant them at the normal time in which you are growing cucumbers. And then about halfway through that growing season, you can plant them again. Now, this all is dictated on when your first average frost date is. Now, some of us have been uh, advanced into a higher growing zone this past year so our frost date might be a little later than what we once knew it to be so this would benefit us in that particular aspect so for example if your first or your first average frost date is october the 15th cucumbers take about 60 to 80 days give or take so you plant your first group of cucumbers normally and then you wait about 40 days and you plant another crop of them so as the one crop works itself 
to exhaustion, you've still got another, you basically got a, a full crop all the way through the extension of summer. Uh, potatoes are another thing. You can plant your early potatoes as soon as you, many of us have got them in the ground and growing. And then you can kind of pace yourself and figure out when the next time to plant your next set of potatoes, whether they're 80 days or 90 or 110 or 130 days, in order to get them growing and harvested before your potential first frost. Now, your frost is an average of the last 10 years. So it doesn't mean that, oh, October 15th, well, we're done. We've had in our location in southeast Wisconsin, where this show originates from, we had in 2016 our last frost of the year what was uh, early march and we didn't get a frost until the fir- the week before thanksgiving our first frost so over a month plus later than we'd ever had before in recent memory now since that time that has not occurred we usually get our last frost about early uh, late march early april and about first week of october that's when the frost comes now everything changes very uh Uh, It's very fluent in the uh, weather world now, so we might see that again. Right. Um, Yeah. So, like you said, you want to keep in mind that these are not the fall, the fall planting. This allows you to plant now, and then you have the late summer. Another crop of that warm of the warm season stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you can even things like lettuce, peas. Those are more for the fall. You right. don't want to do those now. So like Joy had mentioned, the potatoes um, is one. And then also, could you do brassicas like kale? Kale is a grow it in the spring and it will sustain itself. Swiss chard is the same but thing. Like, say you say you pulled out your oh, garlic. Yeah. Right? What would you put behind Bush that? beans. Bush beans. Tomatoes. Potatoes. That's um, fair. That's almost like succession planting. Succession not. planting to a certain degree. Yeah. I label it as a second crop because it's not that, okay, we plant one row of sweet, or one block of sweet corn, then we wait a while, we wait a while. You know, uh, we're planting full crops. We're not planting partial crops. I, I consider yeah. succession planting as a partial crop. So you have a little bit coming in. I'm wanting to plant a full crop so I get a full amount, a full bucket of green so, beans coming in instead of just a, a, a bowl full. So let's give it a timeline here. Okay. So now, now we've reached the point where your summer, or not your summer, your spring crops are done. And mostly, yeah. Mostly. And now you're like, I'm going to do this second summer crop. But then, if you say you have cucumbers that are going to be done in September, you have uh, potatoes that are not these, these ones, but your you next have plant. Your next, like your first planting. Yeah. The ones you put in the ground a month ago. Yeah. Then that's when you can come in with your fall crops that you can you can grow. Right. So those are the lettuces, radishes. So there's some yeah. uh, planning to go into. Okay, this is coming out of the ground. I could put another summer crop in, but I'm going to hold that spot for my fall carrots or radishes or brassicas or whatever it is for the fall. Okay, this area here I didn't get planted, so I can hold that for uh, the the potatoes. You might want to plant more potatoes. Right, the potatoes are halfway through their current growing time frame. I'm going to start another batch of potatoes so I can harvest these at 110 days those potatoes that i'm putting in the ground now are will already be halfway through their growing season by the time i get the first ones out so it's a little juggling of uh, now this is if you have the space available that's the caveat on this if you only have four by four foot uh square foot uh, 16 square feet in the backyard then the square foot gardening method would be the the best method to go about doing this. You could do it, and it's on a very, very small scale, but if you've got 8 or 1,600 or 2,200 square feet or an acre of land, this is a much more... uh, a e- way to easier way to go about making all of this right, uh, math work. I think that also you can do this on a smaller scale, and there might be people saying, like, why would I do this? How does this work? And if you plan properly you can get a lot out of a small space yeah. doing the second summer crops in conjunction with your spring crops being done and then also your first summer crops being done and then coming in a fall planting. It does take time. It takes time to plan that out. It takes time to, to think about that. But 
I think that it could be very beneficial if you don't have a lot of space. Maybe you have like four raised beds and you want to utilize them as best as, prop, as, best as you can. Or you're like us and that, that garlic is is um getting ready to come getting out. ready to come yeah. out or has come out now now is the time to consider what you're going to put there as opposed to just leaving it empty um you know until next spring or the fall possibly so just things to think about um especially because if you're growing you know a lot of the stuff like if you have beans why not plant more right bean seeds are like I don't know, a dime a dozen or whatever. And beans can be yeah. very in very little, uh, very small areas. Uh, a tomato plant didn't get to maturity or didn't grow very good. You can yank that tomato out and put a square foot of green beans in it. Right? Yeah, you can. You can do that. You can. And green beans, green beans will go pretty. And quick. assuming that you like green beans, right? Right. But and and I think this is another good idea for people who really like those cucumbers mm -hmm. because. Most people will plant, you know, if they like cucumbers, they'll plant a fair amount. And think and that's then, all that they're going to get. Yeah, yeah. We're not in Hawaii. We can't grow year round. No, absolutely not. So these are these are some really good some really good points to to place on. And other things you want to consider. Another thing is maybe, um, maybe you you planted those spring crops early and you just kind of tossed them into the soil now once you now that those spring crops are done and maybe you want to work your soil a little bit maybe you want to to uh, amend it or add something to it or have a, a mulching plan or something now is the time if you have that room you might not feel a rush to get things planted you can take some time to get that summer summer second what is it second summer, summer crop, crop yeah. in I feel like say that 10 times fast so there's that as well you could also consider propagation you could do some research on um, propagation planting that might give you some time um, with these second summer crops so this could also not just be like a, a space usage time but a time to like slow down maybe you have some more time to focus you're not as busy um maybe you're like a, a teacher or something and you want to to uh, think about second summer crops i don't know but these are all good options. Uh, the plants grow a whole lot better when uh, in the ground than versus in the seed packet uh, in your seed box. Uh, so you can always maximize. And, and the thing is with the second summer crop or your first summer crop or your only summer crop, some people, Memorial Day comes around, oh, it's time to plant the garden. Labor Day comes around, it's time to yank the garden out, regardless if it's done or not. So it's it, there's a variation of types of gardeners and there's gardeners that oh you know merry christmas happy new year january 2nd let's see what we can put in the ground even though there's a foot of snow on the ground that's the mindset of some gardeners uh, you know get seed started in the greenhouse or low tunnels or high tunnels and grow the extension by utilizing those tools in order to get more on the uh, springtime and later into the, the wintertime. And there are some people that have figured out or chose to utilize the advantages in which they have on their property to grow year round, even in areas where it gets very cold in the winter. And they can utilize this by greenhouses or hot houses or however you know low tunnels growing very cool weather crops or maintaining the growth of cool weather crops during the cold winters that's the thing with the high tunnels and the low tunnels is you're not starting the seeds on november 1st and trying to get a kale plant to grow through february you have established those crops and you are covering them to maintain life and harvest off of them as you need not to get them to grow and flourish over the coldest portions of the year in most areas right and that's that's a very smart smart thing to do so summer crops second summer crops first summer crops plant as much as you feel that you can and feel you have the time in which you can do such if you don't like weeding you can do like several of our guests we've had on the program plant it water it walk away and the strongest plants will survive and those are the ones you harvest and those are the ones you save the seeds for because the genetics of those plants are the strongest or you can put weed barrier down or be very meticulous and weed on a daily basis whatever you 
feel is necessary and will work best for you and keep you sane in the crazy world that we live in. Absolutely. So... Uh, well, summer is in full swing now, Holly, and uh, it's not looking back. But those nasty Japanese beetles, they're weak, wreaking havoc on our gardens. If you're looking, looking to successfully control beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts, derived from a naturally occurring soil bacteria. Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. Just mix the powder with water and spray on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and die. And since it's an organic, burp, burp, burp. <laughs> since it's an organic BT product, you know it's a great choice to use on your fruits and vegetables, in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only is Beetle Gone, not only does it work, but what I like most about this product is that it is safe to use around beneficial insects such as ladybugs, butterflies, and bees, and has zero, has no water toxicity to it. Beetle Gone from phylumbioproducts.com. That's beetlegone.com, and you can find more about what they, what the company offers at phylum bioproducts.com p-h-y-l-l-o-m bioproducts.com when we come back tamra haspel author will be with us you're tuned in to the garden with joey and holly radio show have a garden question give joey and holly a call now or anytime 24 7 just dial 1-800-927-SHOW if you can't get through leave a message and they will call you back call now 1-800-927-SHOW Mantis Tillers, the premium long-lasting gas-powered tillers, are the perfect solution for any garden. This Mantis machine is available with two or four cycle engines with a 19-inch or 16-inch tilling width. Your DIY companion in your garden and your lawn converts easily for edging, aerating, and more with optional attachments. Find details at mantis.com. Your mosquito frustrations are over. Now with Mega Catch, suitable for residential and commercial use. Mega Catch mosquito traps produce a vast array of mosquito attracted stimuli, including safe CO2, and can attract mosquitoes and other biting insects up to 150 feet away. Easy to use and set up. The Mega Catch is ready to make your outdoor space comfortable and enjoyable. At megacatch.com, use coupon code J O E Y B, my name, Joey B, at checkout and receive 20% discount on your entire trap order at megacatch.com. Are you ready to take control of your home's comfort? With Mr. Cool DIY Direct, empower yourself with our top-notch do-it-yourself cooling and heating solution. Introducing the Mr. Cool 4th Generation Mini Split, the DIY-friendly way to keep your home perfectly comfortable all year round. Our systems come with everything you need for installation, including our patented pre-charge line sets, eliminating the need for expensive professional help. Visit MrCoolDIYDirect.com to learn more and to take the first step towards a cooler, more comfortable home. Don't forget, use promo code GARDEN for a special discount and free nationwide shipping. Mr. Cool DIY Direct. Cool your house, heat your space, all by yourself. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva Liquid Microbe Stimulant Spray improves the health of your plants you work hard to grow, stimulates the natural enzymes, and increases beneficial soil bacteria. Go to SoilDiva.net. SoilDiva.net. Water supply tanks provide BPA-free, long-term, safe storage for drinking water. From 35 to 1,500-gallon tanks, water supply tanks has you covered. From preparing for unexpected needs, off-grid property, easy gardening access, and more. For questions and to order, visit watersupplytanks.com and use coupon code GARDENING10 to save 10% off. Make hand watering easy and enjoyable with hose link retractable hose reels. No more tripping over hoses, kinks, tangles, and avoiding rolling the hose up. With an automatic retractable hose link, saves you time and effort manually coiling up your hose, leaving your focus on the things that will bring you joy in your garden. Available in multiple colors and lengths, you'll be sure to find the retractable hose that works for you. To find out more and to buy online via hoselink.com, use coupon code RADIO10 for $10 discount. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Happy to take time to join us today on the program. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. 
Tamar Haspel is a columnist, author, and speaker. She writes the James Beard award-winning Washington Post column, Unearthed, which looks at how our diet affects us and our planet. Her book is entitled, To Boldly Grow. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day, and not only to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And I'll start with this. Where did your passion for connection of food come from? Was it something that happened early on or you found it later on in life and and how'd that work? Well, like most of us, I eat. And uh, and I think that it it wasn't so much that I had a passion for where food comes from, but I was just interested in it. And, you know, even when my husband and I lived in Manhattan, we grew tomatoes on the rooftop. And then when we moved essentially by accident to Cape Cod, we started looking around and saying, hey, you know, what can we do here that we couldn't do in other places? And the answer was all kinds of stuff. And once you sort of start doing things, and for most people, and for, like for me, it starts with a garden, and and y- you stand in the garden and you eat that first little super sweet tomato, you know that feeling, don't you? Yeah. And and you get that smell, and it's warm, and and you realize that the food that you're invested in in this way is different from other food. And so for us, for my husband and me, after we did the gardening, it, it just sort of took on a life of its own. Now, when you grew the tomatoes on the roof, was that something that um, other people were doing, or did you have to ask permission? Because a lot of people are like, well, I can't garden where I'm at, unless you're creative. Yeah, well, we had to ask permission. And I was actually really surprised when I asked the building manager, hey, is it okay if we put some some whiskey barrels with tomato plants on the roof? And she said, yeah, sure, go ahead. (laughs) And then... after we had established it, we had a few of, of these barrels up there. We had some tomatoes. We had some herbs. We had some raspberries. We had some cucumbers. And, you know, it was this great little garden. And I said to, to my husband, Kevin, I said, honey, what, what happens if everybody wants to do this? There's not enough room for everyone to do it. And he said, honey, people in this building don't even cook their own food, let alone grow their own food. So it, it wasn't catching on like wildfire. But... If you do live in a city, it's possible you can use your roof. But there's also a couple of decent indoor options. There's, I love, I think mushrooms are a terrific thing to grow in the city. Um, you get one of those kits and you can grow oyster mushrooms. You can get those, those, those hydroponic herb gardens that go on a windowsill. And if you can get out of the city... Um, there are places to go. There are there's there's foraging most of the year in a lot of places, and you get a little exercise to boot. Also, community gardens uh, in these big cities are an option as well. Absolutely, I believe. absolutely. I've heard I've heard some stories about that. It's hard to get a plot in oh, some yeah. of those at, at this point because they're they're very popular. But but it's fabulous, and you know there are places where it's going to be tough to try and and do any sort of, of food procurement on your own. But but you can always make something work. Definitely. So speaking of that, if someone does want to become more connected with where their food comes from, but maybe they really don't have access to garden space, they live in a food desert, and maybe they don't have good transportation to get to a natural area to forage, etc. How can they begin a better connection with where their food comes from? Well, you know, I think we sort of, we've already run down the city options. And, uh, you know, there are also farmer's markets in a lot of cities. And even though you don't get the food, you're you're, you're not procuring it firsthand, which is what we were doing. You you meet the people who do raise it and grow it. And there's something to be said for that, too. Um, For me, there's something about getting dirty. There's something about doing it yourself. But if that's not an option, definitely go to the farmer's market. Well, with uh, you spoke about farmer's markets. The price of groceries are continuing to go up for fill in the blank. You want to put your reason here. Uh, it is important to find a better source and connection of food like farmer's markets, gardening, foraging. Um, and and, and we're in a, a world and 
I, I say this as if you want to do it and you want to do it bad enough, you can make it happen. Yeah, that's true. It's absolutely true. And if you're a good gardener, um, then and you have you know decent conditions and and you can grow things successfully, then I think it actually can save you money and supplement your budget. It, it, it supplement your food outside of your budget, which is and it's true of things certainly like herbs, which are relatively easy to grow and which you usually have to buy too much of at the grocery store anyway. Um, and but there are a lot of things, and I think you know, going into trying to get your own food, um, if it's a budget thing, you have to go in with relatively low expectations because you have to factor in that not all of your projects are going to work out, right? And and you know, sometimes you know the, the bugs will eat your collard greens, and you'll see nary a one, and so. There are certain things that you can grow. You know, I have a bed of arugula that I put in in the early spring. I have sugar snap peas. And all of that you grow from seed, so it's very inexpensive to grow. Um, And those are going to be financial wins. Shiitake mushrooms can be a huge financial win because they're so expensive in the grocery store. So um, definitely think about what things cost when you plant them. Um, and go for some of the things that are splurges in the grocery store. And if you can grow them successfully, yeah, it is, it's definitely a big win. And, and Holly and I are not doctors, and we don't play them on TV, but it's common sense. What you eat directly relates to how you sleep and how, you, how active you are and how you feel. And the better you eat, the better you're going to be in all of those. Well, I'm certainly in favor of of eating well for all kinds of reasons, and it's certainly true that that eating a a wholesome, nutritious diet um, can change the way you feel. So your book, To Boldly Grow, it's uh, it's a little bit um, entertaining, but also educational. Can you tell our listeners about your book and what they can expect when they pick up a copy? So the Tomoli Grow is about a project that started off being about food, which is, of course, why we're all talking together. And, you know, when, when we left New York City and we went to Cape Cod, we started this project where we would try and eat one food a day that we got with our own two hands. And it started with gardening, and then, you know, we turned to chickens, and then we did fishing, and we started foraging, and we ended up hunting, and and it sort of snowballed. But along the way, I figured out that the reason the project was compelling to me really didn't have very much to do with food. It was because I was trying one thing after another that I'd never done before. And the first time you do anything, that's where the learning curve is the steepest. And and so Kevin and I were spending all of this time on that steep part of the learning curve. And each time you do it, you you figure out that you can do something that you hadn't done before. And sometimes some of those things were hard. If you told me that, you know, I was going to be able to shoot, field dress, and break down a deer, I would have told you you were out of your mind. But once you come out the other end, you feel competent. You feel, you feel confident. And doing things that you've never done before, it's, it's sort of the, the secret to successful self-improvement, which is, which is why I think it really took hold of me. And the book is the story of that. I see. So, and and you chose to, uh, some people choose not to, but you chose to hunt uh, in order to get the more, what would you say, you knew where the food was coming from type of mindset rather than purchasing meat at the grocery store? Is that how well, you decided to do that? I think that if you're going to be a meat eater, eating an overpopulated animal like a white-tailed deer that is doing damage in the ecosystem is the single most responsible way to eat meat. And I eat meat, I eat other kinds of meat as well. But, and it was sort of the natural com, you know, culmination of everything that we had done. But yeah, I feel very good about having a freezer full of venison. Yeah. Uh, you know, people call that prepping now, but our grandparents called that living. You know, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's, and, you know, we don't do it for ideological reasons. We're not trying to be self-sufficient. We, we, we're 
we believe in interdependence, um, but we do it because it's interesting and it's compelling to us. Right. Uh, I, you know, I feel like on some level that the food system has failed a lot of people, especially those who may be considered a lower income people. And do you agree with that? And if so, how can we change that in our society? I mean, the answer to the first question is easy. It's yes, I do think that the food system is deeply, deeply problematic, especially for people who are most vulnerable. Um, but what we do about it is is very difficult to know. And, you know, th- these are some of the things I write about, that, uh, yeah, our food system has become something that people can't navigate successfully. But there is there is something good about it. This is what happens when we have overabundance, which of course we've had for a very long time now. And for all of its problems, overabundance is way better than scarcity. But it does create a landscape of foods that are specifically designed to appeal to you to be overeaten without regard for how nutritious they are. And it has made it very, very difficult for people to eat the kind of diet they intend to eat because they face temptation at every turn. Now, what we do about it is very, very difficult because this is sort of a result of how we operate in the United States. And some people blame capitalism, although there are non-capitalist countries that also have obesity and disease problems as a result of, of diet. Um, and I don't think there are any easy answers, but I think we've gotten to a place where at least we appreciate what the problems are, and that's the first step. I think there was a famous person that said the easy part of the problem is identifying the problem. The hard part is solving the easy part of the problem. That would be exactly correct. <laughs> well, we really enjoyed having you on the program. How can people find out more about you, your information, and pick up your book? You can Google me. I'm easy to find. I'm the only Tamar Haspel on the planet, and you can find me at TamarHaspel.com. You can find me in the pages of the Washington Post, and you can find my book uh, both online and in a lot of bookstores. Well, Tamar, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered and the education you provided Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. We thank you very much for that. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. You're tuned in to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24 7. Just dial 1 800 927 show. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1 800 927 show. Take the guesswork out of composting with the AeroBin 400 or smaller 200 for easy composting. The AeroBin mimics how nature decomposes waste. The AeroBin is easy to use. You prepare your balanced organic waste, just open it up, drop it in, and close. After a short time, fertile compost is produced, which is easily accessed via the lower side door. The thermal insulation in the AeroBin conserves heat, leading to rapid breakdown of the biomass and works efficiently year round, even in cooler regions. There is no need to turn the biomass and it is pet and rodent resistant. It has little odor and can kill annoying weeds and seeds. It is BPA free. The AeroBin 400 or 200 comes with a reservoir at the bottom to collect the leachate when diluted makes for great compost tea liquid fertilizer. AeroBin composts kitchen and garden waste quickly. Easy to assemble with no special tools needed. The AeroBin makes composting rewarding and easy. Go to burpee.com or homedepot.com to purchase. Water the right amount for the right time with the soaker hose from Eaton Brothers. Soaker hose is one of the best ways to water without drowning your plants. And with a timer, it becomes a set it and forget it way to keep your plants healthy and happy. Soaker hose is designed to work at low pressure, seeping water slowly and steadily over the course of 15 to 20 minutes so the water can percolate the soil and get to the roots. Designed and manufactured to be lead free so no harmful chemicals or odors are added to your water supply. Visit EatonBrothers.com for more information and to buy. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. 
Bobono's universal pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you the harvest you've never seen before. Visit Rootmaker.com. Use coupon code ROOT24 to save 15% off your order at Rootmaker.com. That coupon code is ROOT24 to save 15% off your order at Rootmaker.com. Garden like a pro in three easy steps and receive customized fertilizer recommendations for your garden or lawn. Soil Savvy helps you determine what nutrients your plants need to thrive. Never again over apply nutrients they don't need. A patented process that makes you a smart gardener. To get your soil test kit, go to MySoilSavvy.com. Have insects such as aphids or fungal gnats invaded your plants? Fight back with Summit Year-Round Spray Oil and Summit Mosquito Bits. Organic Summit Year-Round Spray Oil kills insect pests on indoor and outdoor plants. All natural mosquito bits kill fungal gnats, larvae, in container plants. Both products are harmless to people, plants, and wildlife. Summit Year-Round Spray Oil and Summit Mosquito Bit are available at garden centers, hardware stores, and at SummitResponsibleSolutions.com. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joe and Holly radio show. Happy that you've been with us today. It's time for your garden questions and our garden answers. You got a question, send it on over to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call toll free coast to coast at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-7469. If you can't get to you, we will uh, leave a message and we will call you back. I had a number, a couple of calls come in this week. We're going to go to Chuck, who's got a question for us, and uh, we have an answer for him. Hi, my name is Chuck. I was wondering if you have heard about electro gardening. Um, it it uh, you take a dowel and you wrap it in copper and you stick it in the ground and it pulls in the ethers, the electricity from the air. Not only that, it gives. Uh, Mother Earth gives out a negative electrical charge. It also keeps uh, bugs and pests away from your plants, and the plants really flourish from this. Anyway, thank you for all you do uh, for us gardeners and the planet. God bless you. Uh, all right. Uh, electro gardening, Holly. Yeah, so I I looked into this, and while there's a lot of information about it, um, from like bloggers, from, you know, YouTube gardeners like Joy and I, Joy and I have a YouTube channel, um, as well and things like that. There's not any actual scientific evidence, whether it be through like a local university extension, any sort of like peer reviewed, like science consistent, actual proven science that this does work on a science aspect. So it might work for you, um, but more you're saying but, it's more of a wise tale garden myth uh somebody did it or did this no. and and showed someone magnificent results and contributed to this even though there was probably multiple other factors that right allowed their plants to grow very very well so let's talk about that for a second okay to get something that is actually like scientific scientifically proven okay you have to have a a control uh -huh. and then you have to have an experiment and a control meaning not just well that we'll just call that a control actual 
everything is as precise and per- perfect as possible. Right, right. Potting soil, the water consumption or the distribution, all of this. Yeah, correct. So somebody might have stuck a. So what is the process? You wrap a, a dowel with wire, copper wire, and, and it pulls it the, the yeah, and pulls okay. the electricity out of the ground right. or something like that. Yeah. Somebody may have done that. But it may have been a, a good year, right? Well, well, just like the potato box. Yeah. Or you, yeah. you grow you four cubic feet of, of a, a box and you grow 100 pounds of potatoes. Never has happened. Right. So, so like maybe people did find quote unquote success with this, but we don't know what else was happening in their garden at the time. It may have been or, just or, like... Or did they really find success or they maneuvered things to where it looked good so they could get some clicks and some blog There's that blog too. There's that too. Oh. So there's no like until you find a website or again like a, a university extension or um, even like a gardening magazine that's like we did this experiment. Better blah, blah, homes blah. and gardens or yeah, yeah. whatever. I'm not gonna trust it, but you know you can give it a go. I think that it would be. I personally be like this would be fun <laughs> to try. Yeah, the cost of copper alone <laughs> would be a deterrent enough, right? To to do it, right? So I'm not I'm not saying like you shouldn't do this, but I'm also saying that for us, Joey and I want to provide accurate information, and I can't be like, yeah, this is absolutely going to work because there is no science based evidence that it does. And it's not like, and it's not necessarily it has to be a university extension. There is some very reputable people in the gardening world that are authors and hosts of, of programming and blogs that do extensive studying about things just like this, and they have not came up with any conclusive evidence that it works. So use your metal post for securing the fence to keep the rabbits out, uh, as well as deer defeat, and don't buy the copper wire and move on with your day. Absolutely. All right, let's go to Ed, who listens to our program on uh, WNAX 570 out of Yankton. Yeah, this is Ed from Worthington, Minnesota. Two questions. Um, I talked with you last fall. I think it was ammonia. I know you gave me the ratio of 9 to 1, and that was you could spray that on your vegetables and produce to kill the moth. Um, just kind of, kind of needed a little more clarity on it, I guess. And uh, also the um, environmentally friendly spray, the gallon of vinegar, the cup of salt, and some Dove soap. Can I spray that the weeds on my garden prior to planting, and then not have any real residual in that soil, or is that a no-no? Okay, Ed, we appreciate you listening. Uh, the ammonia, the 9 to 1 ratio, that is uh, a home remedy in order to spray on your brassicas to kill bugs that are not wanted. And that will work to some degree. The uh, weed killer, the vinegar with the, the soap and I think the salt or something like that, there is some... Uh, it does work in some instances. It's not a glyphosate. It's not going to you know kill the plant instantly. By the way, uh, side note, they are coming out with an organic version of Roundup. I just saw that from a very reputable uh, blog post this, uh, the, the, the yesterday. So, um, so organic doesn't mean I know. Like safe. I know, I know, okay. but that's what they're getting at to get that group of people who won't touch that company mm-hmm. to buy. It. Okay. But back to Ed. Yeah. Um, the it will not set in the soil and uh, toxify the soil. You will have to have multiple applications on your uh, weeds, but it's not going to set in the soil and prohibit the plants in which you are trying to grow. It's not going to pick that up and go, okay, there's a toxicity in the soil, and uh, I'm not going to grow. So that is not a concern with that home remedy. I think I have another question here. I think I I think i have powdery mildew on my zucchini plants but when i touch them there is nothing that comes off that from what i've seen on videos would represent a powdery mildew substance so there's this um so if there if you don't have a substance i don't think zucchini gets powdery mildew often anyway it depends on the moisture at night is the key uh contributor there uh later in the season well based on your environment 
Right. It can get it sometimes very harsh, uh, other times not. Who knows? But anyway, there's this phenomenon or this, uh, yeah, phenomenon called silver silver vein zucchini, and it's just the variety. So where it looks like there's a silvery, almost powdery like web, what uh, mildew, mildew. <laughs> I can't talk, mildew. Um, and that's not the case. So it's just it's called silver veins, and it just looks like powdery mildew. Um, obviously you want to keep an eye on the plants and see, make sure that they're, they're doing fine, but it's just something that the zucchini has. It, it's, it's a, vari- it's a variety. It's a variety. Yeah. yeah. And, and based on what variety is crossed with the right variety, but yeah, touch it. If there's nothing, no substance that come off, comes off of it and it doesn't look like mildew, but it doesn't look quite right. It's, it's this silver vein, uh, variety and there's nothing wrong with it. it it's totally fine it's going to do fine the uh, problem with powdery mildew is the mildew overpowers the leaf and prohibits the sun from photosynthesizing it and the plant will suffocate essentially is what happens on that Being said we have reached the portion of the program where we discuss what we learned today and what i learned today was simply and, and you voiced this in prior uh programs holly never judge a book a book by its cover uh you would not have thought i would not have thought that tamra our our guest to, uh, today was a whitetail deer hunter but she is and she has ethical reasons of why she chooses to hunt whitetail what i learned today is that there's silver vein zucchini i didn't know that i just we usually grow the um black, well, it's black beauty, black beauty. Yeah, yeah yeah so I, I mean, there's some there's some cross that can occur. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. But I just, you know, I there's a lot of varieties of different vegetables, and it's interesting that there's one called silver vein. So, yeah. All right. Well, what we learned today is brought to you by Honey Bee Healthy. Whether you're a gardener, bee hobbyist, or a professional beekeeper, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has the products to help you maintain a healthy hive and thriving garden. For more information on how to use Honey Bee Healthy in your garden, visit Honey behealthy.com tune into the program next week where we'll be discussing five good bugs and how to create the habitat for them in your garden as well in as invasive plants and what uh, they are and what substitutes you can grow instead of those invasive plants our guest is bill stingle the national sales manager for summit reliable solutions Dot com, a sponsor of the program. We'll have him on. And uh, until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.